Hey everyone, Daniel from Twin Bytes with another tutorial for you and this time I'm going to give you a little introduction to Windows 11. This is for newbies or anyone that switched from Windows 10 or a previous version to now Windows 11. It's quite different in a number of areas and I'm going to point out where those areas are and how to access things. This is not a full tutorial on everything to do with Windows 11 and this is not an advanced tutorial for any computer techs or trolls out there that are looking for how to do all kinds of different fancy things. This is for the absolute beginner or someone that just switched from Windows 10 and they really just can't quite figure out how to find things as simple as how to shut down the windows, which I'm going to show you all that stuff in this video. So looking at your desktop, you can see it's uh, it can be customized just like the previous versions. You can have shortcuts on here, which I've just hidden all mine for privacy. Also at the bottom, you got your taskbar and the start button, which the first thing you'll notice is this is in the middle of the screen instead of over to the far left like it used to be. If you're very picky about that and just want to put it back to the left, they originally didn't even give you that option and people were coming out with hacks to make it work but now they allowed you to do it. All we have to do is right click and go to taskbar settings and that's just right clicking anywhere where there's nothing. You don't, don't right click on one of the icons or you're gonna get different options. Right click where there's nothing and go to taskbar settings. Scroll down to the bottom, you'll see taskbar behaviors and then you'll see taskbar alignment is center. Just click on left and you'll see that it moves it right over to the left. But if you want, you can keep it at the center and I'm getting used to having it at the center now, so I'm gonna keep it right there. That's just a shortcut to get to that setting, which I'll show you another way in a little bit. The other thing is the start button itself. You'll see that you have your name here. You can click on it and change your account settings, lock the screen or sign out. And here's the power button over here, where if you click on that, that's where you're gonna find the restart, shutdown, sleep and sign in options. That's all there. When Windows 11 first came out, that power button was in the top right corner, and now they moved it down to the bottom right. You also have your full start menu here where you can pin and unpin icons from your start menu, basically your favorite shortcuts. Anything here you don't want, just right click on it and say unpin it from start. You can also go up to all apps, browse through your list of programs you have installed, right click on anything here and then pin it. Of course, that I already have pinned, but this one I don't, so I could choose pin to start. Same with the icons at the taskbar here. You can right click on something here and unpin it from the taskbar. Or when you're in the start menu, you could right click on an icon here and pin it to the taskbar. In the bottom right corner, you're going to see your system tray where you have icons for programs that are running and you've got your little arrow to show the other icons for the system tray that are hidden. Over to the far right, you got your date, time, you got your battery if it's a laptop, as well as uh, sound and the Wi-Fi if you're using wireless. One thing you'll notice very interesting is if you click on the Wi-Fi icon to change your wireless, you're not going to get the list of your neighbors in here. What you're going to find is all the options for everything that is Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and your brightness control and the volume control and even the battery is here. So it's all in this one screen. If you wanted to do anything with the wireless, don't click on the icon here because that actually disables your wireless. You want to click on the arrow to the right of it and then it gives you a list of the wireless networks that are available to you. On your desktop, you could right click anywhere where there's nothing and you can change the view, change how it's sorted, you got your display settings, personalization settings, and then there's show more options. When you go in there, it gives you the traditional view of this quick menu with all the options that we just saw, plus a bit more. The yellow folder is your file explorer, and if you were to right click on any folder here, you're gonna see some icons instead of the names, where it gives you a hint as you hover over them to cut, copy, rename, and delete. You also have some of the other options in here that should be familiar and then again show more options. If we click on that you'll see a traditional looking menu where you, then you'll see cut, copy, delete and rename spelled out just like it used to be as well as other options that were not in that original menu. 
If you click on the start button, you have settings here, which is the new control panel. Just click into there and you'll see all kinds of options that you can click and browse through. And it won't hurt to click around and browse through things unless you click on a button that says to delete, rename, or set as default, or something like that. Here, if you're just clicking on the names itself, you're looking at the display options, for example. You're not changing the displays or extending or changing the brightness. You just wanted to look at what they are. One of the things you might want to do first is look at Windows updates. This should tell you when it last checked for updates, but don't trust that. Go ahead and click on check for updates anyway, and it will check to see if there's anything new, especially if you just got the computer. And it should find them and install them right away and prompt you to reboot if necessary. Now, this just very quickly found something and installed it. It doesn't say that I have to reboot and it didn't stay on the screen either. So you can run these, reboot if necessary, and just rerun the updates again until it doesn't find any more. And then you know that you're up to date. And Windows should do a good job in keeping everything updated. And as far as any other program and how they work, the programs all work exactly the same way as they used to work on every other version of Windows. The only difference might be if that program is more up to date than it was on the previous version. But if it's the same current version of that program in Windows 11 as what you had when you were on Windows 10, for example, then it's gonna look and work exactly the same way without exaggeration. There is no difference at all whatsoever. They're just individual programs. So I can't go through those with you because they're all gonna be the same. The only thing that might be a little bit different is proprietary programs that came with Windows 11, like for example, the notepad or the calculator. Those things are gonna look a little bit different maybe, but for the most part, they're exactly the same. And that's your quick basic overview of Windows 11 and what's different. And if there's anything specific that you'd like to dive into deeper, just let me know. I may have a video on that already. You can check out my Windows 11 playlist to find out more specific how-to videos on Windows 11. Or let me know and I can create a video for you. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope you did find it helpful. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Even better, give it a super thanks. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.